Every so often, a player comes along that, for one reason or another, completely takes the league by storm, and everything that he does becomes a narrative. We're talking about the Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, or Randy Moss archetype, the players that are obviously outstanding on the field but also draw a lot of attention off the field because their merits are so hotly debated. With Brady, everybody thought he was a system quarterback, at least early on. Peyton was always the guy that just can't get it done in the postseason, and Randy Moss, well, there's a ne'er-do-well if we ever saw one, right? Obviously, all three of those guys eventually proved their doubters wrong, but there was a while there that it was a little bit touch-and-go for them. If you ask me, Lamar Jackson is going to be the next NFL great to fit that mold because the amount of criticism he receives, especially after winning the NFL MVP as a 23-year-old in his second year ever in the league, is pretty inexplicable. I mean, come on now. An MVP in his first year as the full-time starter? It really doesn't get much better than that, especially when you consider all of the other minor achievements that he has had along the way, because some of the numbers he has put up in route to those accomplishments are absolutely cartoonish. Of course, the rushing numbers are insane. 1,206 yards and 7 touchdowns would be a fantastic season for a running back, let alone a QB. And at 7 yards a pop, he was massively efficient too. But Lamar Jackson's impact on the league goes way deeper than just the rushing numbers. The way that his athleticism sets him up for success as a passer has allowed him to do things that are simply unheard of for such a young quarterback. He was the youngest quarterback to achieve a perfect passer rating at 22 years, 244 days, and the youngest quarterback to start the Pro Bowl. Not to mention that he was the first Ravens quarterback to ever go first-team All-Pro. And when you get into some of the miscellaneous statistical thresholds that he has blasted through, it really gets crazy. Lamar has set the record for having the most games in a season in which he threw at least four touchdowns in a game, with four and the record for having the most games throwing three touchdown passes and a 150-plus passer rating in their first three seasons. He tied the record for having the most perfect passer rating game in a season with two, and he set a new bar for highest touchdown passing percentage in the Super Bowl era at 7.4%. Like I said, the numbers are cartoonish. And the craziest part about Lamar's success, besides how young he is, is that according to everyone in the know, in the Ravens organization, he just continues to improve his play and take his skill set to a new level pretty much daily. He gets better every day, Ravens quarterbacks coach James Urban said. I keep seeing growth in all the different areas that we talk about, and one of the important things that we talk about is consistency. You see in our drill work, you can see the growth, and sometimes when the bullets are flying, so to speak, he reverts back to what he knows. There's nothing like seeing a guy with Lamar's freakish natural talent who takes none of it for granted, continuing to get better. It is truly something to behold. But for all of the numbers that have made Lamar one of the most recognizable faces in all of professional sports, there is a lot about the dual-threat quarterback that has flown under the radar to the general public. For starters, people forget that he had such a successful college career at Louisville, becoming the youngest player ever to win the Heisman Trophy at just under 20 years old but he was actually pretty under-recruited coming out of high school. According to the composite rankings, in the eyes of many college scouts, he was just a three-star recruit. His high school coach, Rick Swain, explained that it was in part because Lamar was not a regular at the recruitment camps, where a lot of the big-time high school recruits were making their names, saying, I think that's the only reason he wasn't recruited any higher. If he'd have had much more attention, I don't think I could have handled the mail. I mean, geez. He wound up getting recruited by everybody, but not early. It was not the omission of these camps that held him back, though. A lot of colleges and scouts were somehow too smitten with his athleticism and became obsessed with the idea of changing Lamar's position, which in hindsight sounds ridiculous. In fact, Charles Fishbein, the president of Elite Scouting Services, one of the premier player evaluation firms, explained that he had clients in the SEC that legitimately did not think that Lamar could hang at their level, saying, I was surprised more schools didn't buy in. One SEC school, whose offense was pretty fit and is now struggling with QB play, didn't think he could play for them. Even Florida State, a hometown university for the Boynton Beach native, had little interest in bringing him in as a quarterback, in part because of how much his high school offense forced him to improvise, creating the narrative that he was more of an athlete than a quarterback. 
That notion has since proven to be a massive fallacy. But luckily for Louisville, it was a significant deterrent to a lot of universities at the time, and even NFL teams when he was coming out of the draft in 2018. Even though Jackson was a little bit raw when he got on campus, Louisville's staff knew that they had a star immediately. Quarterbacks coach Nick Petrino explained it by saying, You could see his natural ability in camp. That's why we knew we were going to have to play him. There wasn't going to be any red shirt situation. We knew we were going to have to develop him throughout the year and he'd end up playing. It's crazy that people around the game still think that he is merely a great athlete rather than a great quarterback. It really could not be more backwards of a take because Lamar is far more a student of the game than the media or even his fans give him credit for. The guy is a wizard with the X's and O's and has such a fixation on the details of the process that he actually practices reciting his play calls in the mirror. Perhaps he developed his attention to detail from his mother, Felicia Jones, who is probably the single most important person in the young quarterback's life. In fact, Felicia has been so influential that Lamar decided to forego hitting an agent entirely and has his mother represent him, which, when you look at how things have played out thus far, kind of makes sense. Felicia has actually been strategically guiding Lamar throughout his entire career and was a pivotal factor in making sure that no coach ever tried to change her son's position. She actually deployed a few rather brilliant tactics ahead of the draft. Not only did the Jackson camp completely ghost any team that even thought about the idea of playing Lamar as anything other than a quarterback, but she also had the foresight to not even have Lamar run the 40 or do any of the other agility-based drills at the NFL Combine. This completely changed the narrative around Jackson and hammered home the idea that he was going to the NFL to play quarterback and nothing else. And thank God he did that because he has been one of the single most entertaining players to watch in recent memory, and he is basically reinventing the quarterback position every week. But I guess that makes sense. Lamar Jackson has always been an innovator. From his creative playing style to foregoing a traditional agent, he always seems to be on the cutting edge of something, and monetizing his playing abilities off the field is no exception. Instead of taking a deal with Nike or Under Armour when he entered the league, Lamar decided to start his own apparel company, Era 8 Apparel. And you know what? It's a good thing he did. Some of the designs that they put out there are actually pretty awesome. Awesome enough that he even got his head coach John Harbaugh on board. Although I guess if you had a 22-year-old phenom as a quarterback, you would pretty much do whatever it took to keep him happy, including wearing his gear. Just because he has had some success as an independent in the apparel game doesn't mean that he won't eventually endorse one of the major brands as well especially not with the way that industry experts are predicting that they will be pursuing a deal with the young quarterback. The brands are going to be after him, said Samantha Sankovic, Senior Vice President for Athlete Management and Marketing Strategy for PFS Agency, which represents NFL players. One would think the major three brands have definitely already tried to contact him and his team to start some conversations. But having his own business and obviously the insane amount of success that he has had thus far puts him in a pretty good position. Leverage-wise, once those negotiations do come around, there is just so much more to Lamar Jackson than the quarterback that we all know and love. He's a family-first guy and clearly has strong business aptitude. He is a force to be reckoned with both on and off the field. Of course, it helps that he was born a freak athlete, but if you ask me and pretty much anyone around him, he seems determined to make the absolute most of it. What's your favorite thing about Lamar Jackson? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, then like the video. We'd really appreciate it. And until next time, tune in to TPS every single day for more cool videos. We'll see you.